Hello. Okay, <clears throat> so in the last video, I did uh, the snake in one point perspective. That's this one here. And so in this video, I'm gonna do two point perspective. Um, but I'm gonna do it in the same way, basically, which is that I started off with a really rough sketch on a uh, two point perspective grid that I made myself in Photoshop. So um, I basically just took um, uh, a canvas in Photoshop, made a straight line, and then made two dots and took the uh, polygon tool and just um, had a bunch of, it's like 50 points or something of lines um, spread out to create this grid. Um, really simple to do and it helps for sketching and perspective and it's uh, less expensive than buying a pre-made perspective grid. So what I did here was just do a basic sketch of a snake posture. So basically his tail is kind of coming in and turning here and he's coming out and then he's kind of getting into this striking pose sort of. So now I'm going to <clears throat> uh, construct it to make sure that it stays in the perspective because like this is this part of here, this is off, but that's okay because you always have to have the idea first and then make the perspective fit. So I'm going to do the box for the head. I have no idea what kind of head I'm going to do. I just will keep it a simple shape like the other one. I'll probably just try to do the same shape as the last one. So I need a box. So I'm going to say for two point perspective, I need a line and then I need it to go back to, actually I probably need it to be a little bit more. And then this needs to go to this one. Let's see. All right. And so his head, I'll figure out the thickness here once I find the edges of the box, but first I want to correct this kind of stuff. So any of the verticals need to go straight up and down. So this one's a little off here. So I'm gonna correct that and just erase that so I don't confuse myself. And so this is gonna come back like this. And then it's okay to do a turn, but you just don't want to be like, the lines come out this way and you're going to go like this. That's not in perspective, right? So um, follow the general direction, but you can still have turns as long as ultimately the turn goes in the direction, the perspective direction that you need. So um, basically have a, like a sneaky stick figure that I'm uh, massing in right now. <clears throat> so, there's that back part. And they get wider, so it goes thin. And he's a little wider, so I'm gonna make him a, little, a bit wider here. And then at his top. He's following this perspective line there. And now here is where I got kind of wobbly with my sketch, which is okay. Um, so I'm going to draw through. So this is going to be a little weird uh, at just see it first. But I need to come down this way. I wasn't in too far. There we go. So basically, let's see, this is a... I'm going to draw the top plane of this so that I can see. This is going to be the side and then underneath is the belly. So that's going to be that turn. And this would be turning underneath. So this, and then this is going to go this way. And then he's going to go up and curve. 
So what I actually might do to make this more clear is take a different color. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, yeah, we can see that, that's okay. All right, so this is gonna go up. And this needs to come over. And this is going there it goes. Mm -hmm. So figuring out the turns is just can be challenging because you gotta keep track of all your plane changes. But you see how it works with the grid. You can just stick to the directions and you're pretty good to go. So this is turning. Uh, so this plane goes this under there. Yeah, this one. This is going to come around this way, and it's always going to get a bit thinner. And then we're you're not really going to see it very well. So he's turning that way and up. Now you'll notice that this really doesn't have much to do with the perspective outside of staying, uh, keeping your line directions in perspective but otherwise it's like how does this form turn um, this like tubey shape cylindrical tube shape um, for the snake so now i'm like okay here is where his head's gonna be and i think i'm gonna have it come around like this so to speak um, so then that means I'm going to need a little bit more help with my box. I need it to be probably a little lower. And the only reason I'm doing the box for the head is just to help me know the boundaries and where it lives. So... This is going to go back here. And we've got and there's that. Alright, so then that back line is back there, so you can't really see it. Alright, so that's the box for his head. And now um, I'll actually do this in pen so it's a little easier to see. Again, this is going to be super sketchy and messy of a bitch. So, uh, and I'm not even sure if I'm getting all of his planes quite right, and that's okay. So this is actually kind of a bit of the bell. Let's see, his head is going to connect there. So I actually, if you'll notice, I got the perspective wrong on my head sketch. So um, these lines can't go this way. So his head has got to still follow perspective. So his head's going to come out. It can come down and then out like this. And then we're going to need to go um, Hmm, I need to go. Yeah, he's kind of trying to be straight, a oh, little straight on. I guess that's what we're going to have to call it. He's kind of, he's kind of lopsided. That's okay. Okay. Close up. All right, so we're going to, all right, so he's got those pouchy pouchy areas. So we're gonna say that the mouth is there. 
I reached my maximum recording time, y'all. Sorry. Um, it cuts out like this because my phone says, you reach 10 minutes, you have to stop now and start another video. Okay, luckily it makes a sound, so I always usually maybe able to catch it. Um, so front of his, I don't know, do you call it a chin on a snake? I have no idea. Um, and this is, so the back of his head is here. This is gonna attach to the, <laughs> the neck slash body or whatever it's called on a snake. Um, and then, so defining this bottom plane, I'm gonna go like this. And the reason I do it like this is because this helps to define the, the planes and the masses so that you know what's where it's turning and you know where the other forms are gonna sit, right? Because you can define basically the envelope form, I guess. The, the think of the head as sort of like the container form that holds the eyes and the nose and all the ridges and stuff like that. So I'm going to, so his head's gonna, that's gonna come up a bit more there. Um, I think I'm gonna put his eyes up here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why not? We can make, well, we can make it up. So this needs to be... Um, a little level there. And... Hmm. We'll give him maybe one of those ridges. So this is gonna come down this way. And this is gonna come down here. Actually, kind of challenging to do this whole mirroring thing because your hand is in the way when you're trying to do it. Okay. Hmm. All right. Now I'll put his nostrils right um, here. For this guy, we'll do. Hmm. Well, we won't make it too fancy because it's gonna start to be hard to see. Okay, so here's here are some of the contours. Let's show you how he's turning. So you guys get the idea on that, and then I will use another one, another color here to go over everything. And I'm sorry if the camera shakes a little bit. This is uh, low tech. You know, it's just me and in my studio at home drawing for you guys trying to show you some stuff so all right so that ridge on the eye and 
your nostril. Ugh, this is not fine enough point for that. If you wanted to, you can you know, add the eyes, you can you know, do some lines that indicate the contour and the put in for the scales and all that kind of good stuff. I'll put in some still images of this so that it's a little bit more clear. So if we kind of shade the stuff that's you know, we'll say that there was light here, right? So this this plane wouldn't really be getting much light. And this is this wood, this is turning away, so this wouldn't be getting so much over here. And that helps you see a little bit better. This is a really low tech rendering for light. <laughs> so this is not um, how I would have you guys understand light and shadow, but it's just to give an idea. But uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the basics. You can tell that, you know, just sort of check all the lines. Like this line is, Following the perspective, there's a turn, and then this line follows. There's a turn. This line is eh, mostly following. Yeah, it's going this way. This is kind of a big turn. The diagonal, or the excuse me, the vertical is going up. This line's going that way. This line's going that way. They're all going to the vanishing points. And, um, if there were any horizontals, they'd be going, um, well, no, that's one point perspective, never mind. Um, all your horizontals are going back to the vanishing point, so this one's going that way, that way. This line here is actually probably a little off. It's going this way instead of this way, but it's close enough to where it still fits. So I hope you guys found that helpful. These um, homemade perspective grids are really helpful for sketching in perspective and getting everything worked out. All right, thanks guys.